Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to the Inspiration Chat. You've probably been wondering where Craig and I have been, and uh, parts unknown, the farthest reaches of our outer spheric mind, we don't even really know for sure. But we're back with a vengeance, and today we're hanging out with a really cool Melody Sprouts. You might even say that they're groovy. They make this zine called Hail the Zine Baby, as well as uh, these really cute little colorful zines that feature a lot of popular characters. Craig's got them there. Before we get chatting with this great zine creator, Craig, what have you been up to? Uh, I've been working on something new, a new zine. Um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's a little bit of a mix of what I do on Instagram, my reviews, and also what I do usually with my zines and my writing, just telling a bit of a story. So. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. It's a couple of one or two, three weeks away. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about that. What about you, right? Uh, well, as of yesterday, the day before, uh, whenever you watch this, it won't be the same day that it records. Uh, but my new uh, issue of Pocket Thoughts, whoa, and it falls to the floor. Pocket Thoughts number 19 uh, just came out. Uh, this one is a full color one with lots of uh, crazy art and uh, rambles, you know, stuff you normally come to expect from me. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. So, uh, you know, our, our shops are in the show notes. Go uh, buy our stuff and give me your money. Uh, but also, <laughs> buy our guests stuff and give them some money. Yeah. So, hail to the team, baby. Mel, what's going on? Hi. <laughs> I'm all good, thanks. I'm very happy to be here. It's, it's midnight, just past midnight where, where I am in the UK. But I'm surprisingly not tired. I thought I'd be really tired. I'm okay. It must be the uh, must be the the zine energy that you're getting, man. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Um, yeah, midnight. It's uh, here in Tokyo. It's about eight a.m. Just after eight a.m. Um, on on Monday. So it's uh, the start of the week. Time to uh, enjoy the week. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, I guess first, Ryan. Let's uh, let's jump into about what what do you do? What do you do there, Mal? Sure. Um, so um, Mel, uh, I use they them pronouns, and yeah, I I just kind of I do a bit of anything and like everything I can. <laughs> um, but my main kind of like jobs is I'm a theatre maker and a performer. I work with like lip sync there uh, quite a lot. Um, I do bits of writing. Uh, and, but yeah, like my main passion and like love of my life at the moment is just scene making. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's really really helped me in the past year throughout lockdown and stuff like that. Um, and I've been doing lots more of my illustration work and making comics. Um, but yeah, and so kind of like all of my work is about uh, like my identity and like trans things. Um, but I also love making really silly and comedy things and like things that are light hearted. Uh, and yeah, just kind of that type of stuff. I get the sense that you're fairly new to zines. Like you said, in the last year or so, they've really helped you out. Uh, you know, you really only came under my radar maybe you know four or six months ago right we we started chatting on instagram and stuff um so what was it that got you interested in zines like how did you discover them oh so i was making zines like about five years ago or something because I, I went to a workshop um and yeah i made like one or two like mini zines with out of the uh like full page thing uh, and really loved it um but then I just like I got working in my into like my theatre stuff and my writing and just never had time like to like work on my art or anything and it was always something that I really really wanted to do and like develop because uh, I never got to do like art at school or um, in higher education uh, but yeah I just never had time and then like when lockdown happened <laughs> I just had I had like I had nothing to do and it was it was so bizarre because I was, I was just about to tour um, my solo show and then like bits of it got cancelled uh, and I was just kind of like sat at home and I was really fidgety and needed something to like focus on and like do something creative uh, and then I just remembered like zine making uh, from those years ago and yeah it's and then I just 
really got into it and got really obsessed with it and now like my whole room is just surrounded in <laughs> zines um but yeah so like the one good thing of lockdown is that it brought that passion back that seems to have happened to a lot of people with this lockdown period um getting into things like zine making um and there's kind of a lot i really want to talk to you about but i do also want to jump back to you said about first being introduced by workshop um i've never done a workshop ever but you know i know it's very popular and common um what are what are kind of some of your thoughts on that and your experience in the workshop it obviously had a good positive uh effect on you as it, as it came back five years later so could you expand on that a little bit please yeah yeah, yeah. um so i remember seeing like an ad for it somewhere um it was in somewhere called durham uh and an artist called una don't know what the rest of their name is <laughs> um but it's just like zine making with una and i was like that sounds really weird and great <laughs> i'll go check that out um but I'd, I'd always had like a bit of an awareness of zines because my mum made them uh in like the 90s um and then my like local comic book shop had like loads of them so i'd, I'd been kind of like buying them and grew up with them but never made my own um, and so yeah I attended this workshop um, and it just it blew my mind that you can make a little tiny book out of one piece of paper uh, and yeah uh, I just I think like <laughs> when you go to like a workshop or something and it 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 shows you like this brand new skill it's like it's like a curtain's lifted and you're like oh my god I could make these zines like about anything and yeah I, it was just really cool. Very cool. What uh, you said that you've experienced them in the you know the local comic shops and you know the stuff that your mum made. Uh, what what zinesters come to mind as being influences on you? Would you say like you know what zines did you say or did you see and then say oh yeah I can do that? Mm. Um. So there's a zine maker I know called Mama Lips. I don't know if you've heard of them. Um. I've got one of the zines right here. There you go, so, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, so yeah, I, I saw these quite a lot in um, the local comic book shop and I was like, oh, that looks really cute. And they're kind of like all like like comic book panels just about like day to day life. And I really liked that, that it was just about like really ordinary things, but also like some like queer and LGBT things that are like really connected to. Um, so yeah, Mama Lips is really cool. Um, and then I just saw like odds and ends of like mini zines that were about like really like niche and specific things. Uh, there's a zine called But Springsteen. <laughs> um, and it's just all about Bruce Springsteen's butt. And I just thought that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Um, and I think that's by uh, Black, Black Lodge Press, I think. Well, anyone that follows you knows that you're a big Harrison Ford fan. Um, have you made a Harrison Ford butt zine yet? Or? I mean, now you mention it. <laughs> how, how, how could I not make that? <laughs> um, but well, Harrison Ford. <laughs> I really Harry's want to make butt. one. Oh, my gosh. That sounded like Harry, but... Uh, <laughs> Harry's butt. <laughs> um, Harrison Ford came to like my town when they were filming Indiana Jones and it was just like it just blew my mind um, but I'd quite like to make a scene that's like like where's Wally where, where's Waldo but it's like where's Harrison? <laughs> yeah, where's Harry? Like, yeah yeah where's Harry? And then, and then in, in, and like you could have where's Harry and then the other, uh, the other character could be um, Harry from the royal family, and then you have to find you have many, many Harrys, and then you have to find like Harrison Ford's uh, little face. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds good. <clears throat> I think it actually uh, work with your style. Uh, I want to uh, let's jump into your zines a little bit. Um, 
I really, really like them. I, I've talked, to, I've made a little video about them as well. Um, but what I really like is they kind of remind me of um, of like a collage style. Often with collage work, um, the the imagery goes kind of corner to corner on the page. And I think with yours as well, um, it's a good area. These are the cover with yours as well. Um, it, it, it you know it runs corner to corner. There's a lot. There's a lot of detail involved, but it's all done with um, with like marker or, or or pen. How how do you how do you do that? And I also just before I let you talk about them, I love that you're doing double pages. Um, and I yeah I love kind of the the busyness of it. I really enjoy that. But yeah, how how do you create your little work? Yeah, um, it it mostly comes from just being like a fan of that type of like collage style. Um, and like I was saying earlier, uh, when I was in lockdown, I was feeling really fidgety. I wanted something like really like physical to like keep me focused. And I just found the like repetitiveness, uh, repetitiveness of like cutting and like gluing and sticking and like then folding the zines like that just helps so much. I found it quite like relaxing <laughs> um and yeah so uh like i just use like markers um i forgot what they're called but they're like the ink kind of just like like droops out of these like really cool pens um they're almost a bit like watercolors uh but it's also because i like don't have much experience <laughs> in like different arts materials so pens and like uh pencils are like my go-to um but yeah, like the, like with this one, um, I kind of like uh, we'll start off with the. Um, that's, that's the original of this one, isn't it? Is that the original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That was... Um, so I'll kind of like start off by thinking of a kind of like theme or a scenario that I'd like to run through all of the pages. Um, in this one, I just really wanted to draw some flowers, and it was like uh during all the protests that were happening for uh, Black Lives Matter. And I really wanted to kind of use my platform or whatever to kind of help that a bit. <laughs> um, and so my brain was kind of, yeah, just like connecting it with flowers and like growing um, and uh, like colorful things. Uh, so I did all the background and then I would just cut out little bits of paper and would stick them on with the writing and the quotes and things like that. Mm. Nice. I like this one a lot. The uh, melancholic, melancholic poems lo lose your head over with all the horror characters in it. Uh, I really, really like this one. And then there was one that um, Rich showed off on uh, Feral Publications YouTube there, the uh, Wana Wanga zine uh -huh. and when i saw that one i was like i don't have that one and i, I saw it i was like i love <laughs> that and you don't, I don't have that one. Oh man uh, yeah i'll have I'll to the special people go on i'm sorry right <laughs> i do want a wonga though i think i only had at the time like one copy of the melancholic one and one copy of one among us so they just went in like random direction <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Different, I'll, different places in I'll the world. Try, I'll go on eBay and get one. For, like, <laughs> price. So, so tell us about the new one here. Uh, Hail to the Zine Baby. Uh, title obviously is, is an homage to uh, some Sam Raimi, Army of Darkness, Bruce Campbell stuff here, um, which is groovy. Um, so a little, little comic strips, almost an anthology of your comic strips. Uh, what prompted this? Um, I just really wanted to make like a full zine like for such a long time uh, but I, I don't know like I, I just didn't feel very confident to do it like I felt a bit overwhelmed by the like thing of it being bigger than just like the tiny like mini zines so I felt quite like overwhelmed with like oh my god how am I going to fill like a whole <laughs> booklet um, but I just randomly started drawing like odds and ends of comics uh, in this little book I have uh, and yeah it's just kind of comics about my childhood or you know like just like memories that just like play on the loop in your head 
and you're just like why am I still remembering that <laughs> like it's like those types of stories um and I just thought it might be interesting to kind of like draw them um because usually in my work it's a lot of writing or acting things out um but I quite like the actual thing of just seeing it on a page um yeah I really enjoyed that uh, and yeah, and then I just randomly like got a collection of them together. They're not really like linked the different comic strips, um, but yeah, I was just so excited to just like finally <laughs> get it all together. Well, it's it's a great little collection, and from what I'm seeing on Instagram too, like you know the people who have it are really talking it up. So you know you're onto something with this. Keep keep this going. I look forward to seeing the next one. Thank you so much. It, it's just like. I don't know with my zines it's just been like such a like important thing to me like in the past year or whatever um and it just really means a lot when I'm able to like share that with other people and they've, they've really helped me stay connected with, with people because I'm just quite anxious about leaving the house um but that thing of like getting like actual like post and like mail of, of like people's work and then like me swapping it with people it's like is this the best thing ever? Isn't that the greatest? Like, I still get excited when I get some mail from somebody, whether it's somebody new or, you know, uh, I got, I came home from work the other day and my babysitter says, oh, you know, you got some mail. And I'm like, I got mail. And, I, you know, I got, I got mail from Crash. And I got mail from Rich, people I know. And it's like, wow, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful thing, mail, huh? I love that. Uh, I get just as excited. I get just as excited. Um, so I, I want to maybe um, just you've talked a lot about your other creative outlets. Um, does any of that filter into your zine life at all, or or have you um, or do you kind of keep that separate? Um, so I run a. Uh my own scene making workshops <laughs> um which is really lovely um yeah so I can I run them for like lots of different types of people I've done them for like very young people uh, uh often for like just like disadvantaged people or people from like marginalized communities um and it's quite important to me to make those opportunities free uh because sometimes finance can be a big barrier for people um and yeah just kind of like giving people those arts opportunities that I really wanted to do when I was growing up like if I'd had something like that when I was really like young I would have been like oh my god this is great <laughs> um mm. so yeah uh I run these workshops um and they kind of like we do bits of creative writing or uh like finding like things we can collage with like cutting out of magazines um and then we make like a little mini zine together um yeah and I just I really love that like I like learn zine making in a workshop and now I like teach that to other people like I really like that's just a skill that you can just keep passing on like forever <laughs> well it's a real sense of community too Right. I mean, you know, getting people together and involved and creating together. I'd said to a friend of mine recently who uh, owns a comic book store, you know, I, was, I said, wouldn't it have been cool 25 years ago when we were teenagers if the comic shop that we all went to had like one night a week where people who wanted to draw and make this stuff could all come in and just sit in a safe space and share ideas and bounce things off of each other. And uh, I'm hoping that he takes the idea of, you know, maybe having one night a week for, for that sort of thing. This sounds like a great idea. I think that sounds cool. Um, yeah. it's, it's definitely, yeah, what some things that the Zine community has been doing for a long time with Zine workshops, uh, you know, even five years ago and then 10 and 15. Have always kind of been going on and and created a sort of sense of community and that's one thing the internet has really given us um you know you're over in the uk ryan's in canada i'm sitting in japan at the moment and and uh with the internet it's it's helped the zine community kind of uh continue to 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 grow and to uh to stay together i don't know about you two but i find that the online zine community is such a 
like a very welcoming place and like a loving safe space it's from my experience anyway from from what i've seen and i feel that a lot of zinesters that i talk to online who i've never met face to face actually have a better understanding of me as a person than some of my close friends do i totally get that yeah i, I think like like zine making be like so like personal and like I don't know, it, it can like make such a like emotional response to like seeing people's work and yeah, I've found like Instagram's has been so good for finding um other zinesters and like through like your channel um and feral comics and stuff. I just like yeah, I love it so much because like not many people make scenes like around me. <laughs> Um, but then when I, I log into Instagram, I'm like, oh my god, oh, there's, there's a new pocket thought scene, or there's a new um, Flacinda scene, and it's just like it's it's really exciting, and like everyone's really really supportive, and it's like people I've never met in real life, but like, yeah, I think everyone kind of needs that of like just having a little bit of encouragement about their work, uh, it really means a lot. Yeah, I think if Zines has had. Um like an endless supply of money, I think we would just constantly be buying each other's <laughs> scenes and just sending it all out. And we would just be, I don't know, like keeping the, I don't know, the flow going because like there's a, there's a lot of zines I see on online and, you know, like even your latest one, you guys talked about, I, I, I saw that maybe yesterday, day, day before somewhere. I was like, yeah, I'd love to get that. But like, unfortunately, I don't have an endless supply of money. And uh, but there's like there's there's 15 zines that I see like that almost daily. It's like oh, I'd love to get that, and I'd love to get that. And oh, wouldn't it be nice to have all of the back issues of that person's zine? Or and it's uh I think yeah, there's the the zine community is really supportive, and uh, I think they want to support even more than they are able to sometimes. Well, would you agree that uh? You know, while it's nice to make a little bit of money on our scenes, uh, no one's ever going to become a millionaire doing this. We all know that. There's not a lot of money in scenes. Um, but we give away and trade just as much as anything else. I mean, like, it's super flattering to get a message from someone going, hey, I, I saw your stuff. Do you, would you be interested in trading? Like, what zinester says no? Mm. Right? Nobody says no to trading. Mm. Yeah, it's, I think it's uh, because we, we want to see other people. You know, you make zines because you want to read zines because you want to see zines. Yeah. And, and you're just like, well, yeah, well, you know, yeah, let's trade. Let's trade. It's a couple of dollars or something, you know, for the postage usually. I found, like, when I started trading and stuff, like, it just it put confidence in me and, like, my own work as, like, an artist because I was like, but someone else values my work enough to trade their own like brilliant work and I know that's like it's not a good thing to do um but yeah just as someone that has like a little bit of low confidence anyway like it, it really means a lot when people are like oh I'd love to read your zine and like swap it um yeah and like I, I've never experienced that type of support like anywhere else like it's <laughs> it's like really specifically the zine community which is like I think that's what makes it so special. And the same goes for, uh, you know, being asked to take part in the zine. Whenever someone, you know, messages me and says, hey, you know, do you want to contribute to this? It's like, it's super flattering because you thought of me. I was good enough. <laughs> yeah, and like I get, well, you know, with the thing that I do on Instagram, you know, I get a lot of like, time like you do brian as well you know people just like oh is there any chance or that i oh no they often ask how can i get my zine reviewed on on here or is there, is there any chance you could read my zine and maybe make a video of it and of course like yeah send it over. like oh what can i do i'm like just send it over that's all you need to do here's my address and like people like i'm like I'm stoked that people want want to want to send it all, all the way over here in, in Tokyo and uh, for me to read and just make a little couple of minute video. It's 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 a great community. I really enjoy it. It's uh, like I've made 350 videos or something, and I've never had a bad experience or conversation with anyone. 
uh, about you know making their uh, making their making a video for their zine or anything. It's, it's cool. That's so good, and I think like just like the thing of it of like seeing like your zine in in a different country or just like someone else's house. Like it's like seeing your stuff on TV. Like <laughs> I don't know why. Like just the thing of seeing it somewhere else is just it's so exciting and like yeah, really cool. The one that gets me and it, it just makes my heart skip like nine beats at a time is when someone will show a picture of themselves reading my scene and I'm just like, oh, like, you know, I almost have a heart attack. I'm so excited that like, ah, it's, it's real, it's real. It's out there and someone has it. Because otherwise it's just like, you know, I, I see a, a shipping address on an Etsy thing, right? And then, you know, all of a sudden I've been tagged in someone's story that's, and it's them reading it. And it's like. Yeah, because you just put them in the post and they're, they're kind of just gone and then, and and often, I don't know what the percentage is, like maybe two or three out of ten, someone takes a video, takes a photo or something like that, and the other seven kind of just disappear. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Like, uh, I have exactly the same feeling with my stuff, but it's just, wow, like, there it is. It's in the flesh. It, 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 like, I put it in, I handed it over to the post, uh, to the postal person, and and then now it's, it's, it's there in the UK. Germany, US, whatever. So Mel, we know where zines are right now, right? Like, you know, we have a good idea of the zine world. What do you think the future of zines is? Oh, um, yeah, well, hopefully still doing its thing. <laughs> uh, I, I think like, um, e-zines and like online zines are becoming like really really popular um and obviously like a bit more accessible for people like so like printing costs aren't involved and stuff um i'm personally like just a really massive fan of printed actual like tangible things um but i think yeah i think like digital stuff's really like really happening um i don't know maybe there might be like a kindle scene or something <laughs> like an unusual uh digital scene that you can hold that might be cool i think many zines is like you just said uh you're a big fan of the physical kind of you know the physical zine i think that's that's kind of the thing about many zines is they 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 that is their thing and um and even if money is an issue to to try and print it or to get it out there, I think a lot of zines is just try just find a way. Like it's, you know, where can I where can I print it for can I print it for free at work? You know, can I uh, do I have a friend that, that's got like even a a, pr a printer copy machine at home on their home? like, and you there's kind of like where there's a will there's a way kind of thing with um with a lot of zinesters because. Like a lot of people we ask, they, they talk, you know, they talk, yeah, about like, you know, the e-zines and things like that. And then they always follow it up with, but I'm a fan of the physical, uh, the physical kind of thing. And I think that's the hook in, in, in the, in the zinesters kind of mouth. It's, it's that physical, tangible thing. Well, this, yeah. right, this is one piece of paper, right? Usually mini zines are just one sided, but you've gone the extra mile, which Craig said was awesome. And I really appreciate too, because I hate wasting paper. But I mean, you can make a mini zine with two photocopies, <laughs> one side, one side, right? This will fit into just about anybody's pocket. And you can pull it out any time of the day for a little pick me up or a little, you know, break from the nine to five norm. And I think that's what's so special about these is. Uh, they're accessible, uh, you can transport them easily, have them whenever you want, and you, you can't quite do that with your phone without someone wondering why you're on your phone. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think, like, I've just, like, learned so many, like, new and different things and, like, learned so many different experiences through reading scenes. And I don't know if, like, I might have, like, a short attention span but I find it quite hard to just read like just a normal book <laughs> like I find it really overwhelming but like if it's like 
a zine that's only like a few pages i'm like oh yeah i, I can zip through that or a comic book with with pictures in comic strips um yeah i feel like i absorb that a lot better than just like normal books um so yeah i think that's one of like the brilliant things about zines is it's just kind of a, it can be a quick snapshot into someone's life or um a certain topic or something uh yeah and i just think that's the best i wanted to also just quickly go into before before um, we finish up or anything is uh you've got a little series out called stay home stay queer um is it i want you to maybe just if you want to talk a little bit on um you know how i guess uh queen has kind of enters your life or you know is is a part of your life and a part of your zine life or anything like that is there anything you'd like to talk on on that yeah yeah of course um so i think like zines have helped me kind of like process a lot of my identity um i talk a lot about like being trans and non-binary uh and sometimes like uh what was i I don't know if I sent any of you this thing. Um, this body is not my own. Is that another I one I didn't that... send to you, right? <laughs> I think yeah. I have that. Um, but yeah, like this thing, like I made when I was just feeling a bit weird about my gender, which I often do, and it just really, yeah, yeah, smashing. Um, it just really helped me like process a lot of things that I didn't even realise were like bothering me at the time um and yeah it's just like little bits about my gender it's kind of like a poetry scene i guess it doesn't really rhyme or anything um <laughs> but <laughs> i don't know it I, I really like that making zines kind of help me through difficult times that i might be experiencing um but then with the stay home stay queer ones uh I started them in lockdown because I was feeling like really isolated from like my friends or the queer community uh, and I was like I really want a, a thing that brings us all together or like just an excuse where I can reach out to people because <laughs> I don't know I, I find it quite hard to just start conversations because I'm quite awkward um, but like this thing of like oh I, I've got a zine and I'm looking for contributors would you like to write a little quote for it or something um, that was all like it was all brilliant and it it really helped me as I was saying like it helped me keep focused in lockdown and helped me like have something to do um and yet so I I don't I haven't sent anyone this one but like this was the first thing that I made it's like it's kind of like an activity pack um and this was the first version of stay home stay queer uh, and it's kind of got lots of different like quotes from uh, my queer icons <laughs> um, which are just kind of like people in my life that I think are really cool um, and I, I worked with a, a, a like an artist who I'm trying to find a good example there but, um, I worked with like a graphic design artist who did all the background and then I did all the text um, and I, I, I made this because I wanted something like to help either young people or other isolated queer people who were feeling the same as me like feeling disconnected from everyone because lockdown was such a weird time <laughs> um and yeah it, it, this is just like a free downloadable activity pack it, it's still online um i can send the link um and yeah it's got little activities like uh coloring in or uh making your own little pride flag things like that um, and that was the starting off point and then I like I started making the like the mini zine series of like like that one um, and each one has a different theme I've got a David Lynch one somewhere but I've lost it <laughs> I don't know where that one's went there's a Pokemon one because I'm a big fan of Pokemon um, and that yeah one? yeah 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 I don't have the Pokemon I'll get the brain Oh, that that's the um the mighty Bruce one, uh, and the spooky uh, one. <laughs> these are wonderful zines. Like uh, these are just look at the look at the internal of this uh of this one. This I think this is amazing. I, like I said, 
I think it sounds uh, silly, but like I said, I love the way how the color just goes from corner to corner. Like I think a lot of people don't do that. And it really adds something to something to the zine. I don't know. It, it, it's, it really, I absolutely love that idea. Well, <laughs> Sorry. I can't even do this one handed, but you hold them all up like this, right? Just take a, a selection of these zines that you've made and they all look different, right? From each other. But at a glance, they're all very much yours at the same time. And that's a tough thing to do is to have a style and, and maintain the style, but be different at the same time. But also not doing the same thing over and over that it's it's boring and repetitive. Like, you know, similar themes, right? Stay home, stay queer, but everyone's a different ride. Oh, yeah. That was, like, really, like, important to me. Like, I really wanted... The motto have like a really like specific thing that I just really liked. It was really self indulgent, <laughs> but yeah, the motto to be like really like stand out. Cool. Uh, that's all I've got then, Craig. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I think we've talked about uh, you know things we like to talk about with guests. You know, uh, the future of zines, what they've been up to. Uh, maybe uh, just lastly, what's next? What's uh what do you, do you have any ideas for maybe your next zine or your next move or maybe even if it's in the other creative field that you're doing what's uh, what's next for you mel um so uh i'll be making like the second issue of um hail to the zine baby uh which is cool I, i've got a really silly comic about me wanting to uh, be paul rudd you know the actor paul rudd <laughs> Um, so yeah, that that's a comic strip that's going to be in there. Um, I really want to make more stay home, stay queer, but it's it's a bit weird because like in the UK we're kind of out of lockdown, but everyone's saying that we're going to go back into a lockdown, and it makes it really difficult to be like, oh, I'm making a zine about being in lockdown, but we're not in lockdown. <laughs> uh, just, yeah. just do it in the just do it in the past verb. Stay home, stay queer. <laughs> Or, or no, ask the next question, like, uh, where do you go now if you're queer? That sounds cool. <laughs> go out, go queer. Go out, go queer. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it up to you, I think. <laughs> Both super valid. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, that theme series is still a thing. Um, and yeah, I've been asked to do uh, a few different... Um, like submissions for people's collab scenes, uh, which I was like so honoured to do. Um, I, I can give you a sneak peek of one I've been working mm. on. Uh, so do you know, um, like my horror, like my spooky, cute horror one? Yeah, I one of them. Yeah, I got that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and the, this is issue two with the um. Uh, so kind of like in that theme of like it being really like silly and spooky because that is like my essay um i've got like the candy man but he's tending to his bees in like a little beekeeping <laughs> thing <laughs> <laughs> and he's just having a good day <laughs> <coughs> but yeah that's that's my latest thing that i've been doing today that looks good. That looks good. Awesome. Um, you do a lot of. Uh, I know we're trying to wrap this up, but I just also thought about um, you do a lot of your work is all just pen, pencil, marker kind of stuff. Do you do anything like on the computer, or do you scan it uh, afterwards, or how does um, technology, electronic technology, enter your your zine making? Uh, it's all like old school like drawing and scanning on my really bad printer <laughs> um yeah like I, re I really want to do like digital stuff but i just don't know how like uh i don't really have access to like that type of software um yeah. and not that you need education to do that stuff but I, f I feel like if i if i'd done it at like university or at college i'd have like a better understanding of it and i just never got to do that um 
but yeah, it, it's something that I really would love to. Um, and th- there's been a few times where I've asked Ryan if like people have said like, oh, this needs to be in this margin and the, the bleed needs to be like this. And I've been like, I don't understand <laughs> what that means. <laughs> I've been like, please either, either would I, either would I, so not. Yeah, I remember my, that. My, 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 next, <laughs> my next zine I'm working on is actually handwritten. I'm not even going to bother typing it up. So. Uh, but that that's brilliant. Like I I love people's handwriting. I think it's like I don't know. It's just such a beautiful thing, and it it feels so much more personal when it's like actually written than like typed up. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very thank you very much, Mel. It's uh it's been great great chatting with you. No problem. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I just thank think you it's for being here. Tell everybody where they can get your zines. Um, people can uh, DM me on Instagram at either Hail to the Zine Baby or at Melody Groovy Sprouts. Um, yeah, just drop me a DM. Wicked. Well, Craig, is this the, the first of season three? I think uh, I think this is going to be a good season for Zine Inspiration Chats. This is a great first start. Certainly is, certainly is. It was uh, it was fantastic, fantastic chatting with Mel and uh, and all of uh, all of uh, their information will be down down below. Um, I, I'm sure Ryan will, will fix that up. And um, if you're watching and you've gotten any of Melody's scenes, any of these ones, comment below which one is your favorite. Because yeah, mine is yeah, one. Of one of I don't even have it. <laughs> mine, mine would probably be this one. I, I, I showed this image before, and actually uh, Mel did as well. Uh, the Stay Home, Stay Queer zine number four. Um, it's actually the yeah, the, uh, the the Black Lives Matter support um, support zine, but also just just for the cover as well. Like I just I, I'm honestly in love with this cover. And if you ever make a bigger image of of the of the of the cover, then let me know. Let me know. Thank you so much. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really enjoyed uh, yeah, chatting with you, getting to know all about your zine journey and what you do outside of outside of zines. That was fantastic. Huh? Brilliant. Good all right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and see you uh, next time. Bye, Bye. Three coming at you. Bye. Bye.